Hello and welcome to our presentation, Boost Your Career with LinkedIn Networking. This presentation is a condensed version of our How To LinkedIn Workshop. You can check the Events and Workshops tab on My Career Central to see and book onto upcoming sessions. In this talk, we'll cover these three topics. Understanding how LinkedIn works, particularly if you don't have an account yet. Managing how others perceive you, which focuses a lot on profiles and finding, learning and connecting with people. And that includes finding jobs and information. First of all, a quick word on networking. There are various definitions of networking, uh, but essentially it can be understood as a sort of ongoing communication with people that you have something in common with, who might be able to help you or who you might be able to help. And LinkedIn, of course, is only one platform for networking, but it's very relevant in the current situation when face-to-face -face networking is so much more difficult. Networking can happen wherever you have conversations with people. And it's pretty common in live in-person events like conferences, training courses, etc. But it can happen online too. And it could of course happen in informal settings like parties as well. The etiquette of networking is generally the same, whether it is online or in person. There are some notes here about general networking etiquette, many of which apply to in-person networking. Some of these slides, like this one, we will go through very quickly, but you can pause the recording to read these at your own pace. Now, you may have heard of the hidden jobs market, which is the idea that there are advertised roles, but also jobs out there which people find or create through other methods, generally networking and speculative applications. This slide shows a range of activities set out on a continuum of sort of the least to the most um, time, the ones that take the least and the most time and effort. You can also use these methods strategically to help you achieve your aims. And to clarify, an information interview is a term that means having a chat with someone about their job. Again, this can be done formally or informally. And the idea is that you talk to someone, you ask some questions, you're not explicitly looking for a job, but in the process you build rapport with somebody, hopefully, and you can gain valuable information that you can use in the process of preparing to make a speculative application, for example. So you might have a chat with somebody who's working with a certain company that interests you, and you ask them about the recruitment methods for that company, or you ask them about the kind of things that they value as an organisation to help you tailor your application. You might ask who you should send a speculative application to to make sure that it goes to the right person, get their name, their job title, their contact details. That is very valuable. And sometimes these people will be willing to help you further by helping you to facilitate arranging some job shadowing, some volunteering or letting you know when there might be vacancies. Now, these things are never guaranteed, but information interviews or chats with people can lead to many things. So it's we encourage you to try doing these activities and seeing if you can use them strategically to help you get to where you want to go. And this can be one of the biggest benefits of LinkedIn because it can help you with all of these. So moving on to part one about how LinkedIn works. It's the largest professional social network in the world. It's great for helping you manage contacts showcasing your abilities and your experience, helping you research and interact with people and employers. And of course, there are a lot of jobs posted on the site. You can build your network to see people. And in fact, you have to do that. Uh, you can view the full profiles of people in your network, which is people who are up to three degrees of connection away from you. And Many people, if you can't if you can't see a lot of search results, a lot of the time it's because your network is pretty small. So you may find that you need to set up a, at least a basic decent profile and then connect with as many people as possible to make the site useful to you. It's very helpful to be able to navigate the home page. If you have a Facebook account, you will recognise some similarities, which is deliberate. So you'll see a bar on the top, which you can use to access things like your network search for jobs, check messages, check updates. And in the middle, dates from your contacts or from organisations that you might be following. 
and you can see an overview of things like who's viewed your profile, click onto your connections, see what kind of activities you've had or engagement you've had with any posts that you've um, shared, etc. We really recommend that you customise your settings early on, and you can do this by clicking on your profile image on the top right hand corner. And then changing those settings and you can see the different types of settings on the bottom and that will allow you to control what others can see on your public profile. It can help you to make yourself anonymous when you're viewing other people's profiles because the default is set that people can see when you look at their profile. This is seen as perfectly normal, so not something to worry about. Um, you can decide the frequency and type of notifications that you receive, and this can be valuable because otherwise you might get quite a few emails, emails from LinkedIn. And you can change how LinkedIn uses your data, for example, looking at advertising um, and whether you're happy for them to access that information for personalised advertising. One thing we really encourage you to do is think carefully about how you want LinkedIn to help you. We know that many people set up a LinkedIn account because they're told they should be on LinkedIn, but they don't necessarily understand why. But there are a lot of benefits to using LinkedIn. So have a think about which of these benefits might be important to you right now. And of course, this could change over time. So you might want to build and maintain your professional network. You might want to be raising your profile and managing your reputation by working on the information that you share about yourself. You might want to be using it more for research, so looking at careers information, and that can really help with making all sorts of different career decisions from further study to career paths uh, to what kind of companies to approach. And you might also want to use it to find and interact with potential employers. Now, moving on to how other people perceive you. You may be familiar with the concept of personal branding, and that's really the idea that just like a, an item that you might buy in the shops, you can think carefully about how you present yourself and how you are perceived by other people. And again, this is something you can be very strategic about. Think about what side of yourself you want other people to see, which version of you. And in reference to the digital footprint, this is the idea that if somebody searches for you online, what do they find about you? Do they find lots of information? Do they find nothing? Do they find interesting things or things that might make them concerned? And we know that a lot of employers do use social networks when they are recruiting. So predominantly, as you can see from the statistics here from this particular survey, the vast majority have posted jobs. Some also post on the social. However, LinkedIn is far and away the most important network that they use to search actively for candidates, but also to check out information. Now that may not be referring to your personal information, but they do want to make sure that what you share on your LinkedIn profile matches up with what you've written elsewhere about yourself, particularly in your job applications. And employers do change their minds sometimes based on the information that they find about somebody in a social profile. The kind of things that they like to see are evidence of someone having a positive attitude and that can be in terms of the way that they talk, but also activities that they do. So helping charities and other volunteering. Things that they are more likely to be put off by include things that suggest a negative attitude, swearing, spelling, punctuation and grammar errors, as that can be seen as poor communication skills and inappropriate references to drugs, alcohol, sex, personal details. We always recommend that you make your profile appropriate to your target audience. This is, of course, assuming that you have a target audience, but as you develop your career ideas, you should get more of an idea about who you think might be looking at your profile or who you want to look at it. And think about the kind of environment you might want to work in. Do you see yourself in an office, in a lab, in a school, outdoors? And think of, you know, so you, depending on the setting, you might be aiming for something very formal or a more informal presence. And then choose a photo and think about the wording that you use on your profile to suit that audience and that field. Now you can customise your headline, which is the bit on your profile that explains what you do. And you can write a summary, which is similar to a personal profile on a CV, which introduces you to the reader. 
You can also add relevant activities, skills and keywords, but don't be put off. You can put non-relevant activities as these can still show valuable and relevant skills and other qualities about you, for example, commitment, interests and things. One thing to be aware of is that you can only have one version of your profile, unlike the CV, which of course you can encourage to have multiple versions which are tailored. You can't tailor it because you can't change it, or rather you can't tailor it conditions. You can choose to tailor it for a certain field, but this might be tricky if you're open to a range of fields. So you'll have to think about the wording if that is the case as to whether you focus on one particular area and then change it and focus on a different area, or if you, if you keep it more general. And again, you, to help showcase your skills and abilities, you can add media and you can ask for recommendations from people as well. We encourage you to think about Carl. And now you may have come across this from our other resources and sessions, uh, but if not, you can see what Carl stands for here. And it's a great idea to be using the elements of Carl when writing your applications. But since many people just upload their CV to their LinkedIn profile to get it set up, then if you're not using Carl in your CV, you might want to think about that, but also think about using Carl in your LinkedIn profile. So that's essentially writing about not just what you've done, the action and the context, but also thinking about what you've learned, whether it's knowledge or skills and what you've achieved. Um, so any evidence of your impact or competence in the form of the result. And this is really valuable because employers look for evidence of what you can do and what your impact is. And they're interested in the benefits that you can bring to their organisation, not just features. Again, this is another marketing concept of features versus benefits, which you might have come across. And if not, it's worth a quick search online to find out more. Now, when it comes to profiles, people tend to look at the headline, uh, you, any photo that you have, and if you're employed, who you're employed by, and perhaps a quick look at the summary. So it's always worth thinking about what makes you stand out? What are the key features about yourself that you want to highlight? You don't have to be desperately different to everyone else, but just make sure that you're being true to yourself. And it helps to have a professional summary that highlights any achievements and a bit gives, conveys a bit about your personality. Including keywords in the profile is really important because that will help you be found in more searches. Here's an example of a profile including the headline and the summary. And employers, when they're looking at a profile, they often look at the professional experience to get a sense of how, um, you know, the quality and length of it, to get an idea of what your skills are, any particular posts that you shared which are related to your field, see if there's any examples of your work, perhaps see if there are mutual connections and get a sense as to whether there might be a cultural fit regarding personality or values with their organisation. Now, if you don't have professional experience, don't worry about that, but just keep this in mind for the future. You might have seen skills and endorsements. Now you can add skills to your profiles and other people can endorse you for these. These are useful to have, particularly if you know, recruiters will search for these things, but be aware that it's very easy to endorse somebody. So it's not something that is seen to have a huge amount of value by recruiters. Recommendations, on the other hand, are considered as much more valuable because they are more personal than endorsements and someone really has to take the effort, uh, go to the effort of writing something about you to convey um, how they know you and what they think is good about you and their name is connected to this recommendation. They also have to explain how they knew you, if they were more senior, if they worked alongside you, etc. So you may find that people don't give recommendations very readily you can ask nicely if somebody might consider recommending you. And if you're unsure about that, maybe have a chat with a careers advisor about how you might go about it, although there is some advice online as well. And you can, if somebody does write you a recommendation, you can review it before it's shared to your profile. So you don't need to worry about what somebody might find. Now, moving on to part three about finding people and information, learning, about lots of different things and connecting with people. First of all, we mentioned earlier, there are a lot of jobs on LinkedIn and you can find those by clicking on the jobs icon at the top of the screen and then putting in a basic search criteria to start with. 
and then that will bring up some results and you can click on the all filters option which is highlighted in a red circle and go in to put in more details about what you're looking for to get more relevant results. So just to give you an idea, this is a search that was done in recent months for graduate opportunities based in Norwich. One of the real benefits of LinkedIn is research and career paths, which can be a big mystery to a lot of people. So, for example, you might be doing a certain degree and you want to know what can people with my degree do? So you can search using, for example, the alumni search from your degree um, from your university. You can explore what other people who had that degree have gone on to do. Or you might be using it in a different way where you're aiming to get to a certain position and you want to search for people who are already in that role and then look through their profiles to see how they got there. For example, seeing what jobs they got, what degrees they did, etc. And that can be really helpful sometimes to bust some myths. For example, I have worked with history students who were interested in HR roles, but thought that that wasn't a possibility for them with a history degree. But we were able to do a search on LinkedIn and see that actually quite a lot of HR staff seem to have history degrees and that is absolutely possible. And that's often the case. So perhaps before you make career decisions based on things that you believe, check them out using LinkedIn and make sure that you're making the best decisions possible. It can also more generally help you explore people or job roles in a certain sector or a certain organisation or and you can search by location as well. So there are many different ways you can narrow things down to get a better idea of uh, what's out there that you might do. And you can learn just by looking at people's profiles and looking at company profiles, as mentioned, and you can also use it to reach out to people using LinkedIn, find some interesting people and reach out to them for an information interview, for an initial chat and talk to them and start building your network. It is worth being aware that free accounts do have monthly search limits. So that means that there's it's not clear exactly how many search searches you can do. LinkedIn doesn't publish that information, but it will warn you when you are near um, your limit. And that limit applies both to the number of searches that you can do and the number of results you get per search. So if you plan to do a lot of searching, it might be worth doing it towards the end of the month or perhaps taking advantage of the free month trial of a premium account which doesn't have search results restrictions in it. Now, when you're doing searches, it's worth being aware that there are three different key searches, at least for people. There's a basic search, an advanced search for various things, and you can do an alumni search based on a particular educational institution. And within those searches, again, you can often use many criteria such as people's names or job titles, the schools or universities that they've been to, the organisations that they do work or have worked at, locations that they're based in, and certain keywords related to the role or your discipline, for example. And to give you an idea, to do a basic search, you just click the cursor in the top search bar, type in whatever you want and hit enter. In order to do an advanced search, instead of putting the search term straight in, you can click on one of the items in the bubbles that are highlighted here, so people or jobs or companies, etc. And then, for example, with the people search, you can see the all filters option highlighted in a red circle there. We would recommend that you click on that because that gives you a lot more customizability for searching people. Here you can see what the drop down menu with the advanced people search filters looks like. We couldn't quite fit it all on the page, but uh, do have a look. Moving on to the alumni search. You can do this by finding the educational institution that you want to have a look at. So, for example, you just have to type University of East Anglia into the top bar and click on the school page. Then you can see the number of alumni, which does include current students who are on LinkedIn. And you can use either a general keyword putting into the, um, the search alumni by title keyword or company box. 
or you can use the columns which are highlighted and you can navigate those by um, clicking on the previous or next buttons which you can see highlighted with a red circle to go through and search by certain criteria and that can help you really narrow down the search results from over 80,000 in this case to perhaps a few hundred um, or fewer and that can help you search people. Now when you do the search, the search results look a bit different when you do one of the other searches. This is typically how you will see the results and the same rules apply whereby you can't see everybody's profile uh, but you can see when people are for example second degree connection or first or third from the second for example in this case that's on their profile and you can also see an overview of their photo if they have one their headline and the date and the title of their most recent qualification see as well easily if you share connections with these people and you can click the connect button from here however we recommend that you don't connect in this way we'll come back to that very shortly so we know connecting is a big issue for many people. So we're going to have a think now about who you might connect with and especially how you might go about that. So first of all, many people ask, who should I add? And there isn't a, a right or wrong answer to that. But bearing in mind that the more connections you have, the more people you can see, then there is a benefit to having the biggest possible network. And in reality, it's unlikely that you're going to be judged by your contacts. You can hide your contacts from other people anyway if you want. So probably what you can do is just add anybody that you want if you choose. It is up to you if you want to keep your network fairly small but have a much better uh, quality network because you take more time to connect regularly with the people that you are um, connected with. Or you might just decide to add everybody that you know from every part of your life. It's very much up to you. Although, of course, being strategic and adding people in any fields that might be of interest to you is a good idea. But bear in mind that actually anybody that you know might know somebody relevant. And again, that's why it can be useful to add lots of people. Now, the best practice in terms of connecting is to go onto somebody's actual profile page. And again, you need to do this on a, um, well, this, this is most easy to do from a laptop or PC. Because if you go onto the person's profile, then usually there'll be a blue connect button. If there is a blue message button instead, you can click on the more um, on just, just along next to, uh, next to that, and there will usually be a connect option underneath that. And what we recommend is that you take advantage of the option to write a personalized message. Now, there are only 300 characters in this, so you don't have a lot of space, but it is enough to convey um, why you want to connect with somebody and, be, and show that you're being polite and making an effort. Sadly, not very many people follow this best practice, but it will really, really boost your chances of people accepting you if you do. It is also possible to customise your connection requests if you are using the mobile app. Again, you can just click on the more button under connect to add a message in this case. Obviously, if you know somebody well, you may not need to bother with adding a message or you might just write something very casual. If you know somebody a little bit, then it's probably better to be professional, but perhaps striking a more friendly tone. And it can often be useful to mention where you've met somebody, um, especially if that might be a useful reminder for them if they might have forgotten. With people that you don't know yet, but you want to get in touch with, then it is a very good idea in this case to give a quick introduction to yourself and explain why you want to talk to them. Because this will reassure them. Um, and Things that can help are mentioning things that you might have in common with them. So, for example, connecting with UEA alumni is often really helpful because you have that talking point. Um, might be reaching out to someone who's done the same degree as you, either at UEA or elsewhere. Or you might see that actually someone just shares another interest. And bringing up something in common can just help encourage that rapport and help you start a conversation. So here we have a couple of messages. For somebody that you might know a little bit, i.e. you've met once, or somebody that you might not know at all. And again, you can pause and read these at your own pace. When it comes to connection etiquette, be aware that you and others can accept or, or even report a connection request. But reporting of requests is extremely rare and only likely to happen usually with recruiters who are writing inappropriate connection requests. 
usually the worst that will happen is you'll be ignored. But do be aware that if you don't receive a response, it might not be because someone is ignoring you. Some people simply don't read their LinkedIn messages for months. So don't be surprised if perhaps you get a, a quite a delayed response. And be aware that you can ask people for help and many people are happy to help you. But if you do this, you'll boost your chances of being successful if you are realistic about what you're asking for. If you strike a friendly but polite tone and get to the point quickly so that people don't feel like you're wasting their time. And of course, don't harass people by contacting them multiple times if you haven't had a response. It's also fine to remove old connections if later down the line you feel they're not relevant. If you want to grow your network quickly, then there's some easy ways to do that. You can connect with other people who have big or relevant networks. So, for example, connect with UVA Career Central with the UVA alumni team profile. Think about your school's careers advisor. You can also join the UEA alumni group even when you're still a student and you don't have to worry about having a great profile beforehand. Just make sure your degree is on there. As you get more confident with LinkedIn, you might want to experiment with some of the more advanced features. For example, you can follow people and organisations, which helps you see updates from them in your feed. You can join lots of groups and get involved with their conversations, which can allow you to interact with professionals. And there are often groups about specific fields which can be really useful to get into. You can write posts, so creating your own content or sharing other people's, and you can like and comment on other people's posts as well to interact with them. And LinkedIn Learning is a series of online courses and content which you can access, and Career Central makes available a certain number of licenses for final year undergraduates and graduates to help develop their skills. So what might your next step be? If you're not on LinkedIn yet, then perhaps in the next week you could create an account and a profile using your CV and add at least 10 people to get you started. If you do already have a profile, you could try to add 10 more people and perhaps try searching UEA alumni with your subject to see what comes up. And if you like, you can request a profile review from a careers advisor. And you can do that just by booking uh, an appointment online using the live chat or our appointment booking form or emailing career.central at uea.ac.uk. So as a quick reminder, this is what we've gone through today. Understanding how LinkedIn works, thinking about and managing how other people perceive you and looking at how to find information and people, learn and connect. If you still have questions, do make a virtual appointment with a careers advisor or if you'd prefer to see us in person, you can pop into the library and arrange a campus quick query at our welcome desk on floor zero, which is staffed from Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. And as a last quick note, if you're a graduate who wants to stay in Norfolk, then we have a whole range of services that you can use to help support you in your job search. There's some information here on this slide and you can find out more if you sign up at the bit.ly link below.